Good evening, everyone. Any idea what piece this is? It's Schubert Impromptu, Opus 90, number 4. And I used to be able to play it, so I'm trying to get it back. And the only way will be to do slow practice where I'm shaping every 16th. There's four 16ths in each quarter, and, each, and there are three quarters in the bar, so that's 12 16ths in a row. I have to be able to give an emotional content to each one of those 16th notes, and not just be on the surface of the key and sliding past it, and some shorter, some longer, that doesn't fly. So I'm trying to find a way that allows me to shape that emotion. So I'll come up with a little analogy that I thought I'd share with you, because when I take my deep breath in and I use my abdomen on my back, either or or both, and I thrust that energy out over the keys, I'm surrendering it to gravity and the f arm is going away from me in the sense of almost like a swimmer doing the breath stroke. You're going out like that, but gravity takes over. The finger placed is firm and placed down from the knuckle. I want to cushion that tone the way I come into it so that the tone is not harsh. And so to have that cushion effect, but then to draw. So I came up with this analogy because on the news they showed this car accident and the camera had been going and the guy flipped the car right upside down and uh, six men were at a restaurant right near there and they all raced over to try and get the driver out before the car exploded. And so they all got along the side of that car and they heaved and rolled the car onto its wheels, took an axe and smashed the windows, the window on the door and got the guy out. So if you knew that person that's in the car, you're going to have an emotional feeling. As, are they going to be able to save him? Is he going to die or is he going to live? Or, the feeling that is created in that motion of creating that tone is very important. And those people rolling that car back up onto its wheels couldn't possibly do it if their feet weren't on the ground. So it has to be grounded. So you're, you're grounded in your bench and your feet. You're sitting tall, you're leaning forward, you're deep, taking that deep breath, and then you're going to thrust that using your abs and your back or both, or either or, or both, to get that energy uh, all those 70 trillion body cells out over the keys to drop. Uh, the higher, the more acceleration, forces mass times acceleration. The bigger the distance, the greater the acceleration, the bigger the tone. But each note is like rolling that car back up. It's think of drop and draw. Draw the car up and then rotate over to the next note and go through the procedure for the next 16th note. So if I can think of that, it may sound like a lot to think about, but once you get onto it, it's really a lot simpler than just playing lightly over the keys and some of them short, some of them are long. It's not even. It can't sound agitated. It has to sound like a pearl necklace, and each pearl is the same as the one beside it. So you have to have the strength to do that. So you have to cultivate what that finger is doing in the key as you roll that car over. Just think of it from your heels, from, from your body, from your whole body, where where the energy is needed to turn it upside down onto the tip and roll you over to the next note. So if I go slowly,
too fast they're working too fast. And I have to remember that on that third quarter where it's just a single note, I got to give time for four sixteenths. Two as an eighth a note, and then two as a sixteenth a sixteenth rest. So one two three four 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 one two three four. So when it goes fast. You, 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 ready to go there so I go slow one turn the car over for every note and then rotate door knob now this is pianissimo but that melody has to shine out, so I have to rotate the hand that way, thrust the, take the deep breath, throw, thrust towards that, and it's like as though there's a steel, which there is, a steel wire that's vibrating there, but think of a, tr of a trolley in a mine shaft, and the trolley can move away from you, and the note is in it. If you think of going out that way with that note and following the vibration of that wire out over till it doorknob links to the next note, then you'll find your ear picks up on that melodic line so much better. So just feeling it. So I want that slow.
repeats, and then Schubert's great at repeating things. <laughs> Actually, this is all repeat straight through, and then it comes. Because there's a lot of repeat in it, it makes it not as difficult a piece as it at first appears to be to learn it, but uh, it's one I want to get fully steady, keeping it slow like about one, two, one, two, the whole piece straight through like that, and then just notch it up a little bit, but then keep the roundness to each tone, each of those sixteenth notes that I'm creating a feeling of it, not just letting it uh, shape each one. Ask yourself, is that note going to survive the accident? <laughs> mm. When you give special attention like that to each note, I learned that from Natalie Coriati. She, Warn she showed me how important every note is, that every note matters, and every note has emotion in both hands, not just in the melodic line, but in both hands, in the accompaniment notes too. So I have to shape every note that way for feeling and for linking and smoothness and for f f caring about the music, not just playing the notes. And then it'll become fun to inject my own personal feelings for who survives and who doesn't in, in each note, where it goes f to and from, and play it from the soul. That's what makes music start to become fun when you're performing. So it's a long journey, but it's coming along, and this piece is a great one to, to do it with. So I hope you got some ideas from that, and have a good evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>